my name is Tracy Lenz. I'm a petroleum engineer and today is a quick tutorial on how to research a permit if you think that there's activity in your area. Now we're going to do two different scenarios. One is if you know the API number that you're looking for, if you know the permit number, the well name, you know some information about the well. And the second is if you don't know anything about the well, but you know the area or the operator that you're looking for. So this first scenario, I happen to know the lease name. We're on the Railroad Commission online system. This is the drilling permit query. So I will leave a link in this video as to how to get to this website. And we're going to paste the name of the lease. You can also paste the API number up here. You can say what county it's in. If you have the permit number, you don't have to have everything here. You can use what you have and go from there. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit submit. So I always hit reset or return accidentally. Hit submit. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Okay, submit. So that leaves us with the results here of this search. And here's the API number. So we're going to click on, uh, just, you know, really just keep click, clicking these links until you get to a page. that looks like this. And here is where all of the information that you're looking for lies. Um, ultimately you're looking for just a lot of data on one page. And if you scroll down, you should see a bunch of links at the bottom of the page. Here's what you're really looking for. So you can see the plat. The plat is just the drawing of what the well will look like. You have um, two different ones here, it looks like. So one is the off-lease penetration point plat. That means that the surface well is not on the same lease as the actual drainage. And I have a video explaining that. I will link. This is showing where that surface location is. The second one is the permit plat. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to download. Now, this is a. these are both TIFF files which is a image type. Now, if you have a Windows computer, your Photos app should be able to open a TIFF file. So from this plat, you can see all of the acreage that's included in this wells permit. So what they're combining together to create a, either an allocation well or pooled acreage or whatever that they're using to apply for their permit to drill this well. And this is how you'll know if your acreage is included as um, something that will be needed to be leased or is leased already, and whether or not you're going to be owed payment for any production that comes from this well. On this plat, you'll see several important items. So the first one at the bottom is the name of this unit and the company that is filing it and did this survey. So this is Reliance Energy. This is in Dawson County. You'll see the name of the surveyor who, who drew up the plat. And then here we have the details on what you're actually looking at for the well. So in red is the path that the well is going to follow. So SHL is surface hole location. So that's where it comes out of the ground. That's where you can walk up and touch the well bore. Uh, FTP is first take point. So that is the first place that the well will start having the ability to drain from the reservoir that it's targeting. So if this is targeting, um, say, the wolf camp, this is the first place that it will hit the wolf camp and potentially start draining the reservoir. It has to be a certain distance from the lease line, which in this case is 100 feet, and that's why they have to show on a survey plot where that is. Now from there, so all the way from SHL to FTP, no drainage of the reservoir is happening. That's just showing the, the straight line path between surface and take point. Now, if we scroll down, you'll see all the different tracts of land that's included in this lease, all the way down to a point that's called LTP or BHL. So that's last take point or bottom hole location. Bottom hole location is where the well ends and last take point is the last chance for that well to drain the reservoir. Usually it's about the same spot, especially for these planned well bores. 
Um, after the well is drilled, the last take point might be a different place in the bottom hole location. So again, that's 100 feet from the lease line. The leases are in gray. And so this is where you can say that if you have, for example, if your lease description or your mineral acreage is described as the northeast quarter of section 11, abstract A142, you can look at this plat and the northwest, so here's section 11, abstract A142, and the northeast quarter is what they're calling Tract 2, the Harold Vogler Trust. These are typically named on who owns the surface, not who owns the minerals. So if that's not your name, but you own 100% of the minerals here, that's probably who owns the surface. Now, this also shows how many acres are in each tract of land. And then also this total unit, 640 acres, is how much land is in this entire box here. So there's four 160 acre tracts of land. And so that is creating a 640 acre unit. If you own 64 net acres in this box, you would have 10% of the production that comes off this well. Now it's probably leased at like 20 or 25%. So you get 25 or 20% of that 10%. But that's how generally these things are calculated. It's usually once they draw these little boxes around an acreage that is calling how much is the total and then whatever percent you have in there is all pooled together and distributed evenly. Other information we can get from the permit is whether or not it's approved, what reservoir it's approved for. You can click and open these. So it will show all of the railroad commission's disclaimers. We're looking at more details about who exactly this operator is, where they're located, what the API, API number will be. So here's that 4215333, that is the API number. So the first two is the state, the second, th uh, the next three numbers is the county, and the final five is the well's unique identifier for within, the, within that county. Um, we have what date it was received and what date it was issued. This is a sprayberry target. So sprayberry is above the wolf camp and what depth that they're targeting. Another thing you can get from the permit is the acreage designation. So this will show you the total size of the lease that's being pulled together or allocated together. However, the acreage is being combined. There's multiple different ways to combine acreage, but it will also show you the proration unit for this well. And the proration unit is the thing that many leases uh, will key off of. So if it says that a well will be drilled and that well will hold acreage, but only the amount that is proration unit for that well, this proration acres is how much acreage is assigned to that well. Sometimes it matters. Sometimes it doesn't. It depends on your lease. Okay. So scenario number two, what if you don't know the lease name or the well name? You just want to see if there's any permits on your land. So you can put in as much information as you know in here and um, just start seeing what you get. So if you know the county is, we'll just go back to uh, Dawson County, which is what we were just looking at. You don't have to know the district number, but if it's a pretty easy search to see the district number on the River Commission website. Um, most of West Texas is District 8. You don't have to know the location or the operator name, but let's say that you, maybe you did know that the operator was Reliance Energy, right? And, and you knew that you had a lease with Reliance Energy and you just wanted to know if they've started anything yet. So we'll put their name in there. We'll pretend like we don't know the lease name. We will pretend we don't know the field name or the depths or any of these issues here. So we'll go ahead and submit. Here's all the wells that Reliance has, fill, um, has filed a permit for in Dawson County. And we can sort this by date. So if you click it once, it will sort in uh, ascending order. So oldest to newest, click it again to get newest to oldest. So now you'll see the most recent well that that company has filed in Dawson County.
So here's the API numbers we were looking at. So 115 is Dawson County's county code. So 42 is not being included. So the actual API number you might be used to seeing would start with a 42 and then 115 and then 33870. You can also see a lot of this same data on the Railroad Commission's GIS viewer, which is just a fancy term for a map. So if we zoom in to Dawson County in the area that we were just looking at, as I zoom in, more stuff will start to show up on the map. And if we go to the area we were looking at, this well here is the permitted location we, we were using as our example. So if you don't know, if you don't want to use the search tool, you can see here and you can get more information about the well. I don't know if it's just me, but I personally kind of struggle with using this map, but it is good to see like visually what, where things are, are what things are happening, where. And so what you could do is go to this map, look at it and say, okay, here's the API number. And then go back over to that query tool and type in the API number to the query tool in order to get the more details about it. This is just the surface location to the bottom hole location. So it draws a straight line between the first and the second. And as you saw from that plat, it does make a turn. These lines aren't straight up and down like you saw on the plat because it's surface to bottom hole rather than first take point to last take point. So just keep that in mind. And if you want to look at any other wells that are on your acreage or in the area of your acreage, this is a real quick way to get there. If you're not actually sure where your acreage is, there is a search tool in this where you can type that well API number or the address that you are looking for, and it will take you there. Um, you can have the different maps. You can look at different visibilities, put railroads, city limits, pipelines on there. You can change the imagery to have a street map or topographic. Maybe this is hard for you to read and you want to put it to be dark gray in the background, right? Uh, you can do any of that from this. Do measurements. It's a nice little map considering it's free and offered by the state of Texas. So please email me if you have any questions and I'd love to help you if you need it. Um, but hopefully this gets you on your way. Thanks. Have a good day.